you're going to do that. Um, yeah, we'll do the whole thing. The bridge. Take the bridge at the top and then um, so we are like So you want to take the, the third verse then, like that, um, like you just did, that was awesome. Um, Mike, do you want to do verse one, or do you want to do one? You do verse one? I'll do two, and then, cool, cool. Uh, you are my rock. Take one, verse one, and then Mike, why don't you take verse two, and then we'll come in with you. Um, what we got? I gave you two extra pages. Thank you. 
Good morning. A special welcome to St. Teresa of Avila. We're so glad that you're here. Thank you for coming. We appreciate your flexibility and patience as we seek to make St. Teresa's as safe an environment as possible. While it is impossible for us to guarantee a completely sterile environment here in church, we have been working closely with the archdiocese and surrounding parishes to make Mass as safe as possible for all of us. During Mass, please follow the directions of our usher. Be mindful of physical distancing if you need to use the restroom or get up for any other reason. Keep your face coverings on through the entirety of Mass and refrain from singing any of the hymns or Mass parts. And we have an announcement from Together in Joy. Good morning. Good morning. Look at us, Together in Joy. My name's Kevin, I'm a longtime, lifetime Catholic, and I approve this message. Too soon? Too soon? So together enjoy St. T's 2020 virtual fundraiser gala will be held on when? November 21st at 7 p.m. You all knew that, right? Okay. And we want to see you all there. And this was not planned, but I and a lot of us want to see Jack Halpin in his kilt. And there he is. Jack! How are you, Jack? He's not wearing a kilt, but we want to see him there. Hey, register now at www.togetherenjoy.com to buy your tickets. Now, it's $150 for a dinner package. There's about 27 remaining, so we're selling them. Or $50 for a registration code. And there's a raffle ticket to win a Peloton, because you're all looking fit, you're working out. Uh, a Peloton are available for $100 a ticket, also at www www.togetherenjoy.com. And there's about 65 tickets available. Uh, the dinner package that I mentioned, the end sales for the dinner package are at the end of the day on Wednesday, November 4th. All proceeds earned from the fundraiser go directly to supporting St. T's ministry. Okay? One more thing. Lastly, we want to see you all at the event, and we need your help. All you have to do is simply take a photo with the Together and Joy sign to, or make your own. So you can do it as a solo, you can do it as a group, you can be serious, you can be silly, you can do it at your home, you could be doing it while you're shopping. Have some fun with it. You'll send the photo to Danielle, I'll talk about her in a second. By Wednesday, November 4th, both the sign and Danielle's email is at the website www.togetherenjoy.com. You got that? All right? To demonstrate how easy this is to just take a photograph is we are going to have paparazzi and Father, I just celebrated a birthday, Frank, will help demonstrate how that is done. So paparazzi and Father Frank. Father Frank, just go right up to where Danielle is. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you know a phone, you take a picture, you hold the sign. This is just riveting. This is science right here. Whatever you want to do. Okay, see how easy this is? You can all do this. What a great model. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give them a little. So in less than a month, we look forward to being virtually together in joy for this wonderful event. I thank you for your time. You're smiling behind those masks. Don't let those dancers in your eyes get tired, and let's have some fun, okay? We mixed it up. We did an announcement before we started everything else, so we, it's kind of fun. So now I'm going to go over here. Thank you. true. 
life to free us and show us how to love. We come to light our lives on fire. With mercy we inspire and gather all as one. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. A welcome to all. We have a number of visitors. This is the most people we've had in this church since uh, March um, 8th. That was the last time we had a regular mass before the pandemic. We have 125 to 130 because of the families. We're allowed to have more with families. This is one of the most beautiful liturgies, as well as next week's, our first Holy Communion. We split up because we wanted to get as many family members and friends to be able to attend. And so we have nine children making their first Holy Communion. This is truly one of the greatest liturgies of the entire church here for this parish. So we did everything we could to make it special given the situation. So I kept passing by this store on Armitage Avenue that that makes these, these um, ceramic, beautiful pieces of art. And I thought, what if each child had their own chalice as a way to make the Mass special? And so all those chalices on the altar were made by our children. Um, and they will be able to take them home and keep them as a remembrance of their first Holy Communion. So it's really, they're absolutely spectacular. And Thanks to Claire, I have my own, which I will take with me, and it will be with me forever. So I will keep my own First Communion, um, and I will use that for lots of different Masses uh, for, for here on in. So I welcome all of you. This is a, a Mass of joy, lots going on, together in joy, our fundraiser, and especially our first Holy Communion children. This is, so, this is just a moment we want them to remember. We want them to remember this day and their, their beautiful dress and their suits and their sport coats and their beautiful chalices. Um, this will be a liturgy to remember. Let us open our hearts around these beautiful children about to come to that altar for the very first time in the midst of this pandemic, in the midst of joy. And let us open our hearts and ask for God to forgive us of our sins. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us sing the praises of our God. Bless. 
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, increase our faith, hope, and charity, and make us love what you command so that we may merit what you promise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. Thus says the Lord, you shall not molest or oppress as an alien, for you were once aliens yourselves in the land of Egypt. You shall not wrong any widow or orphan. If ever you wrong them and they cry out to me, I will surely hear their cry. My wrath will flare up and I will kill you with the sword. Then your own wives will be widows and your children orphans. If you lend money to one of your poor neighbors among my people, you shall not act like an extortioner toward him by demanding interest from him. If you take your neighbor's cloak as a pledge, you shall return it to him before sunset. For this cloak of his is the only covering he has for his body. What else has he to sleep in? If he cries out to me, I will hear him, for I am compassionate. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, you know what sort of people we were among you for your sake, and you became imitators of us and of the Lord, receiving the word in great affliction, with joy from the Holy Spirit, so that you became a model for all the believers in Macedonia and in Achaia. For from you the word of the Lord has sounded forth, not only in Macedonia and in Achaia, but in every place your faith in God has gone forth, so that we have no need to say anything. For they themselves openly declare about us what sort of reception we had among you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God, and to await his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who delivers us from the coming wrath. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a scholar of the law, tested Jesus by asking, Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the greatest and the first commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as you love yourself. The whole law and the prophets depend on these two commandments. The Gospel of the Lord. Once again, a welcome to all. What a beautiful sight this is. This is the most people we've had in this church in almost eight months. So it's good to see you all, so many families with these children. These children remind us in the midst of a pandemic, there is so much hope and so much to be joyful about. Uh, And this Mass is one of my favorites. And this year it will become even more special because of the situation and because of your extreme compassion and patience in trying to make this liturgy and all liturgies so beautiful. And I used two words came out of that gospel, greatest, the greatest of the commandments, two commandments really, the greatest, love of God and love of neighbor. It boils down to that. So you can become great boys and girls. You can become great. How do you become great? Who is the greatest boy or girl in your class? If I were to ask, I can't go down because of the situation, but if I were to ask you who would be the greatest in your class, I bet a lot of you would say the greatest person in my class is the one that gets A pluses all the way down the line, right? The one who is the greatest in my class is the teacher's pet, the one the teacher likes the most. The one who was greatest is the one who gets chosen first for all the teams of baseball and football and basketball. Those are the greatest. 
that run the fastest, that play ball the best, that get the best grades, that are liked, that are popular, those are the greatest. I think most of you would say that. For us adults, there's a lot of us adults in this church, we may think we're really refined, and we may think we may answer differently than these children, but deep down, who are the greatest in our lives? The greatest deep down, when you really think about it, those that are successful, those that are smart, those that have families that seem to have no problems, try and find one of them. We think of those who are greatest, those that have MDs and all sorts of letters after their names. They're great. The greatest people are those that make money, that those who are, fam are famous, the celebrities are the greatest. Jesus turns our understanding, boys and girls, of who is great upside down and inside out. I'm going to give you two examples of who was great. A child in this parish several years back in sixth grade, not that much older than any of these children here, he made it a mission in his school to not sit by his friends. And this lad was very well versed in sports and very smart. That's not what made him great. He decided he wanted to help the boys and girls who were pushed away because maybe they weren't as smart as he was. Maybe they couldn't do sports and they were made fun of. So he made a point at lunchtime, he showed off these people and he ate with them. That was his gift. That's what made him great. When he was able to at 10 years old, 11 years old, to see a lonely child, a child made fun of by how they looked. He actually saw them as his neighbor and he loved them. Was he able to say that? No, I'm saying it for him because that's what he did. He loved and that's what made him great. Not straight A's, not his good looks, not the fact that he was the best ball player, no. What made him great was that lunch and he showed his friends through witnessing how to care for the lonely. How are you doing with that, folks? Three weeks ago, I wasn't doing so well. I was struggling with lots of things, with getting tests. I'm fine, look at me, I look great, I'm fine. So the purpose of this homily is not to make anyone feel sorry for me, there's no, I'm fine, I'm 100% fine, I'm perfectly well. But I had to go through some tests. And one of the tests was really, really not pleasant. <laughs> It was horrible. A nurse came in. She looked at me and she said, we're gonna make this as good as we possibly can. And she took my hand and did what she needed to do as a nurse to inject me with certain things. And she looked at me and I looked at her and I said, I says, you see it all, don't you? You see it all? She goes, this is not my job. She goes, this is my way of life. And I looked at her and I said, you mean you have a vocation? And she looked at me and says, I, I wouldn't have it any other way. Then she says, my goal in life is to make people healthy and I want people to be comfortable in this room. Even if they're suffering, I want people to know how much they're loved. She wore a cross and I was in my t-shirt and I had a cross on and she goes, oh, you are a follower of Jesus. I says, yeah, and so are you. And we talked in the midst of this exam, in the midst of this test, in the midst of a lot of pain, we talked about faith. And I looked at her and I just said, you are really wonderful. You are great. Was she great because of what she did for me? Of course, she obviously had the skills. She knew what she was doing. For when she pumped that, whatever she pumped into my veins, I was feeling quite good. She was great because of her love for a frightened guy in his 60s, not sure what was going on, she put herself in my shoes and she became my neighbor and I became her neighbor. And in this magical exchange was love. 
And every time we come to this Mass, boys and girls, when you take that chalice and you take the host, the purpose of this meal is to make you great. And you become a great boy and a great girl by using the talents God has given you, by using your smarts and your, your ability to run and to have fun and to be creative, to help people who aren't such as you are. We have nine boys and girls who are on the way to being great. And parents and grandparents, how are you witnessing to these nine people? How are you witnessing to what it means to be great? You have the power to be great parents, great grandparents. You have the power to be great in how you love. This is such a powerful mass. I almost could cry because we need this mass. This is, well, I think this is the most significant mass I've celebrated since the pandemic because I am so pumped up <laughs> for these kids because I want this mass to be special. <laughs> I want them to remember it because that's what builds great people, good memories. Let go of the bitter memories. Let go of the ego memories. Remember moments like this. They make us great people, don't they? Don't they? I want those boys and girls, will you stand? Just stand for us. These children are in the, in the means and the process of becoming great little guys and girls. They're about to receive their Holy Communion for the very first time. Boys and girls, we love you. You are our neighbor. We love you. You love us. And we want you to remember this moment forever. So what is the response of the congregation to our nine children? And let us join them and rise. He suffered death and was buried, rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds in the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sin. I look forward to the resurrection of the body and life of the world to come. Amen. And we call upon the Lord who is our refuge, our strength in all times, all places. We present all of our needs to him. For the welfare of the Holy Church of God and the unity of the human family, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace throughout the world and the reconciliation of states and people, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the healing of the sick and the, feeling and the feeding of the hungry, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our deliverance from all affliction and danger, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For everlasting light and peace for those who have died, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our needs, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. At this Mass, we pray especially for Paul Garlock and Mary Jasquart, and we also pray for those who recently lost their lives to violence in the city of Chicago. Daryl Rushing, Sean Green, Devious, Devian Davis, Mirio Shields, Anthony Jackson, Davius Pertle, Arturo Munoz, Eduardo Triano, 
Nabil Marhauer, and Mubashir Khan. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for all who are in special need of our prayers, for those for whom we have promised to pray, and for those we pause to remember in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord. We also pray for these nine boys and girls about to receive their first Holy Communion, October 25th, 2020. May this be the first of many beautiful liturgies as they are nourished and strengthened by Christ to be great in how they love. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all those who are sick in our parish. Um, I've had the honor and the joy of anointing um, Josefina and Ken Jaskor, and I think they're both doing much better. For all those who are sick, we pray to the Lord. Let us pray that as we approach the election, we will vote for whoever it is we're going to vote for. May we vote for the one who will help us to love our neighbor the most. Whatever platform or political party you are going to follow, vote for the one who's going to make us love our neighbor. Uh, and let us also root out for our children, these nine children and beyond, all that divides the human family, that makes us not neighborly, um, that makes us not love loving, especially the darkness and the roots of racism which continue to plague us. We pray to the Lord. And finally, um, we pray for Steve Kalinsky, one of our parishioners. His mother just passed away. Um, and Steve has been with us this parish for so many years. He's a wonderful, wonderful parishioner, does so much for our parish, and a great friend. I pray for him, his father, and may his mother be welcomed into the halls of the heavenly blank banquet. We pray to the Lord. Loving God, your Holy Spirit guides us in the way to becoming great disciples, great lovers of our neighbors. By our prayers, renew the power of the Spirit in all of our hearts, and we offer these prayers through Christ our Lord. And before we continue, we can be seated. Um, two weeks from today, I'd like to start having drive-through communion, uh, drive communion, if you will. There are many who can't come to Mass for good reasons. They're perhaps up there in age, they have pre-existing conditions, they need to protect their health. Uh, so I'm going to offer communion drive up communion. You would come up on Armitage Avenue, enter the parking lot. There'll be three stations, roll the window down, spritz your hands, receive communion, and then hopefully a little donation so we can start making up what we're missing with our basket collections uh, on Sundays. So I'm going to try to start that in two weeks. Uh, so it's, a, it's the safest way of receiving Holy Communion for those that can't, that can't or shouldn't come to the church. Uh, so I need more volunteers. We are in desperate need of volunteers. We're one of the few parishes we can't get volunteers uh, to help. Uh, it's the same people doing it every week. Um, and I just had an offer from one of our wonderful parishioners uh, who said despite being perhaps um, seasoned in her age, she's going to still help. So what the heck? Um, we need all the help we can get. We can't, we can't do much more with masses because we're not getting response. So we need people, especially those who are, who are able, who are healthy, who are younger, to step up to the plate because it's been uh, since July, August, September, October, November, four months, almost four months, and it's the same 10 people, and we're supposed to have about 30. So we're one of the few parishes we're not getting up there. So please try the younger folks. Uh, I know you're busy, but so is everyone else. Um, and lots of parishes have got lots of volunteers. So please step up to the plate because I'd like to offer communion for those that really shouldn't come to church because they've got pre-existing conditions. And two weeks from today, hopefully, if we get enough volunteers, we'll start it. If not, we can't do it. Um, and as of now, we can only have one or two Masses Christmas because I don't have enough volunteers. So please, if you're able to, I'm begging you. Anything else I need to say, Barb? <laughs> She's... Sign up after Mass, give us your name. Um, it, it's becoming a really big concern of mine because the, the bishop and the dean are calling me, and I have to be honest. So it's becoming a concern. We need more volunteers. Finally, I have a tree here. Um, I'm trying to connect the liturgy since most can't come to Advent Masses or Christmas. This is an Advent tree, not a Christmas tree. You can buy it for 10 bucks. 
you can make Advent in your home. All of you in the church, but especially those of you who are watching. We have 500 households watching. It's 1,000 people on average. Put up an Advent tree. On the first Sunday of Advent, put one thing of purple lights. The second, and I've done this myself, purple lights. There are actually, they call them pink, not rose, but the lights for the third week of Advent and the lights for the fourth. So it becomes an Advent tree and keep it lit through the whole season. So that's, that thing was 10 bucks, honest to God. And you can order the lights on Amazon. You can only just put one set of lights. But make Advent central to your, to your house so half of you aren't coming here. You know, two-thirds of you can't come. So I'm trying to make Advent special for those that can't be here as well as all of you who can. And finally, the Advent wreath. I use these candles in my house. The pillar candles instead of those, those thin candles. I would, don't, don't use those thin candles. They go down real quick. These I use every day. So I have three purple and one pink rose. You can also use four votive candles. You can get purple. You can get them anywhere. These, this was two bucks. So, and you can put a candle there and use it at dinner time, breakfast, you, and teach yourself, your children, your... It's for everyone, single people, couples, families, no families. I do it, that's how I celebrate it. And I keep my Advent tree and I simply keep it purple. I put it in a corner and the purple and the pink is beautiful lights for Christmas. So I'm gonna keep trying to advertise, please get the, your materials now, your Advent wreath with the pillar candles and your tree, cheap tree, go to uh, Target, whatever, cheap. Something, something simple and teach these children about Advent because we're gonna get almost four full weeks of Advent this year. Thank you. Go ahead, Jason. Pray, my friends, our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father.
Look, we pray, O oh Lord, on these offerings we make to your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service may be directed above all to your glory through Christ our Lord. And I invite the nine children to come forward and stand before the altar. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just in salvation to give you thanks, Lord God. The Paschal mystery, Jesus accomplished this beautiful deed. He has freed us from sin and death. Now he calls us to the glory of being called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, and a people for your own possession. The angels, the archangels, thrones, and dominions, we sing the hymn of glory. Indeed, holy, O Lord, you are the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts by sending down the power of the Holy Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for all of us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, he entered willingly into his passion. He took bread, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you eat of it. For this is my body which will be given up for you. When the supper was ended, he took the chalice, giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection. We offer you, Lord, the bread of life, this chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to stand in your presence and to serve you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember your church spread throughout the world, bring into the fullness of chair with Francis, our Pope, Blaise, our Bishop, and all those who lead us in faith. In a special way, remember your servant, Steve's mom, Nancy, whom you call from this world to yourself. Grant that she who was united with your son in a death like his may now share with him in his resurrection. Remembering all those who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and those who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy in us all, we pray, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, and our Mother with St. Joseph, Teresa of Avila, and all the saints who please you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. I may praise you and glorify you through your Son, Jesus, who is the Christ. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Right.
eyes and with these children, we pray the beautiful prayer of Jesus, our Savior. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, so we pray, from all that is evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be free from sin and safe from all fear as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace, that even may peace, I gave you, look not on our sins, but in the faith of the church. Graciously grant this parish peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. I invite all of you, especially our first communicants, to go back to your parents and your families and offer a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, be the one who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. In the body and blood of Christ, strengthen all of us to love our neighbor. Amen. the congregation to allow our nine children to receive their first Holy Communion. They'll receive the body of Christ from me, and they'll receive the blood of Christ from their own specially um, handmade chalice, um, and then we will distribute it to the rest of the congregation.
Uh, hello, everyone. Um, hello. My name is Mark Newhagen. Uh, if you don't know me, I'm the director of mission. It's great to see um, our new faces here today, especially for the first communion. But uh, I am here to talk about the last chance for you to sign up for our civic engagement groups. So uh, if you haven't heard this announcement over the last few weeks, uh, we have, uh, we are combining with about seven other parishes. You can see some of them uh, listed right there. Uh, to do discussion groups on the Society of Jesus' 
discussion, uh, discussion guide on what does it mean to be a citizen and a Catholic. Uh, it starts the first week of November after election day because the discussion, if you're part of it, you'll learn this soon enough, that the guide talks about being a, a faithful Catholic engaged in our community is much more than voting. Uh, so if you'd like to join us, we have, so we have about eight parishes sponsoring it, but we have people from over 15 parishes participating. So if you'd like to come and do, join online discussions with people from all over the diocese, uh, make sure you join uh, by Friday. Uh, we're gonna, I'll probably leave this up after the mass. If you wanna scan the QR code, you can register uh, today. A second announcement that I'd like to give, and I said this a few weeks ago, uh, we have a parish survey out. Uh, you might have seen it on our weekly email. It will be beyond helpful for us uh, to fill that out, to kind of give us feedback about what we can do better, especially with the pandemic. So uh, that's also gonna be on our website, but you can also see it in our weekly email that goes out on Saturday at noon. Uh, I'm gonna be around if you have any questions about the survey or the civic engagements groups. Uh, I'll be uh, at that entrance uh, at the end of Mass. So thank you, and uh, congratulations again for all of our first communicants. Thank you, Mark. And we also have four people in RSA this year. That's the most we've had in four years, five years. Four people wanted to become Catholic. So that's a really a good sign of life. So thank you all. Thanks to the catechists um, who worked so hard to make um, this day so special. Thanks to the parents here. I know you just want this day to be special. Thank you all. What a beautiful liturgy it was. I mean, the music and the children, it just was just a beautiful memory for them. So thank you all. And next Saturday, we're going to be having a Halloween gathering, it, we, acknowledging the restrictions, uh, kind of like a, a tailgate party. It'll be in the parking lot. There'll be the teenagers. We have a growing teen population here. We've got about 15 teenagers um, and last year we had about three, so we're growing. Uh, they're going to be hosting a Halloween for children with appropriate distancing, masks, and, and candy, and the trunks will be open. So 12 until 2, 12 until 2, Halloween next Saturday, 12 until 2 in our parking lot. And hopefully in two weeks we'll be able to do communion, drive up communion for those people who truly cannot come to Mass for lots of reasons. And I'm hoping to do it if we get the volunteers. So thank you. And uh, congratulations to the families here and to these boys and girls. Congratulations. <laughs> Let us pray. May your sacraments and this first holy communion, O oh Lord, we pray, perfect in us what lies within them, that what we now celebrate in signs we may one day possess in truth through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Mass is then we go in peace to serve our neighbor. Thanks be to God. Mm -hmm.